we're on the verge of a real social, a real social crisis in this present time. And um, the media, the media for one, and all these kind of so-called fake judges out there, although they think they're real in their world and they're in their post white supremacist or their post PTSD, post traumatic slave disorder society, um, are promoting it from these fake so called psychiatrists and psychologists, along with the so called bouncers and ex policemen who are doing these talk shows on TV. I want you to like look at so called these talk shows and these court TV shows, and a lot of you are already watching and viewing and you know, we've also been um, watching and checking out and viewing it probably, probably maybe more than we should, but it keeps us with our proverbial finger on the pulse of what's going on. And it's some madness you're seeing, not only from black folks, but as Christ even said, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, I have not been sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He was very specific. He said, I didn't come for the Romans, you understand, but he would send his disciples for those scattered amongst the Romans and the different nations. Remember, the, the, the prophecy says that the true Israelites will be scattered throughout all nations, east, west, north, south. So how could just a, a bunch of converted Jews from Europe, you know, up in, up in, up in Europe and, and, and the Slavic, the Slavic areas of Europe be the only Jews in the world. But that's what the Bible says, what it says concerning those who say they are Jews but do lie. And some would say, oh, that's anti-Semitic. You want to know what's anti-Semitic? Slavery. Slavery is anti-Semitic. You understand? Know and unfortunately, our pastors and preachers and teachers and, and, and others have totally let us down. You know what I'm saying? We've been totally let down, and we're on the verge right now of chaos. We're on the verge of chaos. Slavery in America was an anti-Semitic act. Believe it or not, like it or not. Now, some would say, well, blacks are not Semites. These are ignorant people. These are people who don't know the truth. You know other Semitic languages in the world? Just check this out for a moment and go and do your own, your own research on this. Of the Semitic languages in the world, the most popular spoken Semitic language in the world is Arabic, perhaps because there's so many Mohammedans and Muslims. But do you know what the second most popular Semitic spoken language is? I'll give you a moment and take, take a guess. Mm -hmm. What's the second most popular Semitic language in the world. And this is going to be shocking to some, but it's a fact. You understand? And if you don't want to be naive or believe me, please, you don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Just check it out for yourself. It's Amharic. Amharic is the official language of the empire of Ethiopia, now known as a republic and democracy because even those Negroes over there, yes, they're Negroes because nigger means Ethiopian, Ethiopian means nigger. They're having a problem too because it's not reserved. This situation that has come down upon earth is not only reserved to so-called the lost sheep over here in the West, although we're in the eye of the storm as now we have the old black nigger being lined up against the young black nigger. But let's stay on message right here that slavery Slavery in America, the enslavement of the lost sheep was an anti-Semitic act. It was an anti-Semitic act. Because the proof now of who the black people are, the black people that were sold into slavery in America is well known and has been well documented. And even though many people will try to deny it because they are deniers and they're liars, although they try to deny the fact that the lost sheep or black people who were sold into the Americas and the Caribbean are just so-called Africans or just, just some wild tribe that they found here and there and he picked them up. No, 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 no. They were the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 68, will explain the slave ships and that migration. And you can never in your, in your life and look at all the history. You can Google it on the, on the Internet. You can look it up. And show me where the so-called white or European converted Khazar Jews fulfill that prophecy. 
Are they Jews? Well, the religious ones, I guess they are. They converted to religion, they believe in, so forth and so on. But for them to palm themselves off, that's a lie. For them to palm, even Amos 9 and 7 says, aren't you like the Ethiopians, the children of Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So it compares the Ethiopians. But then if you look at the word Ethiopian, the Atlantic, Southern Atlantic Ocean was known as the Ethiopic Ocean during the time of the slave trade. But now they want to call it the transatlantic slave trade when that very ocean was known as the Ethiopic Ocean. And then we all have further proof that the so-called Negroes were also called Ethiopians. I'm talking about the Negroes that, or the black folks or the enslaved Africans that came over here. It's like listen to Herman McCain, Herman McCain, excuse me, Herman Cain speak saying that he prefers to be called black American other than African American. Because although we were brought here from Africa, my roots and my heritage is in America. See, niggas have lost their proverbial mind because it's not an actual mind. They're mindless. What does he mean that he, although his, he was brought from or we were brought from, brought from, or some niggas would say, although we come from Africa, we come from, you mean like immigrants? We didn't come over here as immigrants. Why are black folks so afraid to speak the truth? You know what I'm saying? Why are they so afraid to acknowledge the facts? And the more you look at the community and, and black people in America, not the little couple of the celebrities and stars on TV and in the movies and, and the pop singers. See, they keep those people in front of you. But the real deal Unfortunately, you'll see more of the real deal on a lot of these so-called, whether it's the Maury Porbit show, I mean Pobit show, you know what I'm saying? Or you're not the father, you're the father, you're not the father, you're, you're the father. You see the madness there. Whether it's some of these so-called divorce court TV shows, you see the madness there. If it's some of our favorites like Man Up and Joe Brown, you see the craziness there. Or whether it's the other, you know, nothing wrong with weed, um, Mathis. You see the craziness there, whether it's some of these other, now you got these other uh, white people who wouldn't have no real job otherwise, retired police officers and bouncers are doing shows too, where they're giving counsel and helping out the community and helping to, they're just helping to police the same old law sheet. That's all it's about. But on the point of our identity, because of that, and see, God says this, and, and we can see this madness only in a particular people. You've never seen the degradation of any other race or nationality or tribe or whatever you want to call it, other than among so-called Negroes, niggers, blacks, black Americans, African Americans, Afro Americans, Afro Americans, whatever you want to call it, or just colored Americans or Americans who happen to have color and be black, you know, because some don't like no hyphenation. I'm against hyphenation. These niggas are mad because they still are, they still are like the Israelites. You remember the Israelites in the wilderness 40 years later, still wandering. What was it? What, what, weren't we free at last? I know this is a little bit of a rant because it is a rant. We deal with the teachers, but sometimes you've got to rant. You've got to rant a little bit on these things, and it's a teaching even in this particular rant. And the main point of this particular rant is that slavery, slavery was, first of all, the greatest inhumanity, insanity in history. That was bad. That was, that was ungodly. But you know what was worse? What happened after slavery. <laughs> that's, that's what really was worse. Well, think about it. To this day, if we start talking about slavery, and not seeking to the, they say, oh, that's a blame game, and a lot of blacks want to just blame the white man, blame the white man, so forth and so on, and don't want to man up. They might have something there. They really might have something there. Because if we do what we've learned from the white man, there would just be a whole, there will be a global revolution. You know what I'm saying? And there will be blood in the streets. If we were to do what we've learned from the white man. If we were to man up and, in a sense, be um, proverbial white men for a day, that day would be the last day. That, that would be the last so-called civil, civilized day on the face of planet Earth. You understand? So one can say, well, black people are a little more merciful. 
I, I would I would say it, and this was going to be the subject matter of of, of of another rant, and the subject matter of the other rant was going to be about how black people, especially in America, are some unforgiving Negroes, are some un, especially to other black people. You understand? The white man can come in the community and shoot 41 times or 51 times, and they just go march, and nothing will happen, right? A black man steps on another black man's shoe or something like that. He'll turn around and kill him, or they have some argument, and in the middle of the night you'll hear some gunshots, and somebody will be dead from that. You understand? Because of some, excuse my language, but some bullshit. You understand? Some real nonsense. The white man will take your house, take your car, will throw you in jail, even though you didn't commit no crime, and do all these other things. And still, you have niggas like um, Rodney King come out saying, um, why can't we all just get along? Shit, that's a nigga's problem. The nigga's problem want to get along with his oppressor. But the Bible also explains that one of the curses of the lost sheep will be this crazy mentality. You know what I'm Will be this inability to recognize exactly what is in front of our proverbial face. So we come back around to the main subject matter. The main subject matter is that U.S. slavery, slavery in America was anti-Semitic, was an act of great injustice and anti-Semitic. Now, to those folks, because there's some people out there that will say, you know, some of you black people and black consciousness, Afrocentricity, whatever like that, you always are blaming the white man, always blaming the white man. And you're always going in the past, talking about what happened. That wasn't you. You understand? That wasn't, you know, most black people in America are no more than maybe a generation at, at, at least or two. You understand? And maybe now approaching as, as, as we're getting older folks and everything, maybe three. But some are no more than a generation to two. You understand? Away from the cotton fields, the plantation, and from Moss's hand before we were emancipated. Look at emancipation for a moment. First of all, look at the so-called, the converted Jews in the Holocaust. Imagine saying to the Jews, you know, because you have Jews who are younger Jews who never went through the uh, um, Holocaust, they never experienced Nazi Germany, and they even are writing books and talking about the injustice of the Holocaust, what they learned from the Holocaust, how this should never happen again to them mainly. But as soon as a black man or a black woman begins to articulate on slavery and the aftermath and the fact that nothing really has changed besides the chains that bind the Negroes in America. And what's worse yet is when any black person picks up this document. Check this out. Mm -hmm. This particular document right here, which is known as Let's Make a Slave. You got some Negroes that would say this is not even real. They would say that this is not real, even though everything you read in this, though it was allegedly um, based on what was said in events that occurred in 1712, is still manifest today. And this document says, and, and, and let me just quote this document says by a slave master named Willie Lynch. He could probably be the president. The Republicans want somebody like that, huh? In my bag here, I have a foolproof. That means any old idiot white person could do this. You understand? I have a foolproof method for controlling your black slaves. I guarantee every one of you, if that is installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. For at least 300 years. You know what's so kind of interesting about this? Do you know my people? I, I'm just recognizing this too just now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Rastafari. When you look at this here, it says, what Lynch said to his, I'm, I'm getting a little bit excited because it's something I'm, I'm discovering right now. So I'm, I'm sharing this discovery with you. I'm not going to, you know, cut off, the, cut it off and meditate or something like that and get back to you. But I'm sharing this with you right now. I wanted to talk about the fact that some dismiss the Woolly Lynch, Let's Make a Slave, or the, or the Woolly Lynch Papers, or Letters, or How to Make a Slave, or Let's Make a Slave. It has a couple of nuances and differences of language because it really originally didn't really have a title, but those who published it, I think it was like Frederick Douglass and others who published it, recognized that this was a methodology 
for the enslavement of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the black sheep of the family, the so-called black peoples who was brought from Africa, raped from Africa, and enslaved in the Americas and the Caribbean. And here he says, in my bag here, get this. I have a foolproof method for controlling your black slaves. I guarantee every one of you, he's speaking to the white folks now, to the guys, the goys, and the girls. He says, I guarantee every one of you that's installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. My method is simple. Any member of your family or your overseers can use it. Now, Woolly Lynch, this is in the opening of the Woolly Lynch um, letters, papers, let's make a slave, how to make a slave. And it says, editor's note, get this, the editor's note, this speech was delivered by a white slave owner, really a white slave master, you understand, a very evil, he's, you know, slave masters were, most of them were as evil as the Nazis. In fact, they were, they were eviler for, than the Nazis, and slavery was worse than the Holocaust. Yes, I said it, and we need to stand up and say, this doesn't mean that we should dismiss the persecution or suffocation of another people. I want you to note this because, you know, some of you niggas get a little bit too wild. You know what I'm saying? You wild out too much. The, you know, I mean, if that's what they said happened to them, it, there's a big debate about it, but let's not busy ourselves with that. If it really happened to them, that's bad. You know what I'm saying? That, that, is, a, that is a damn shame. You know what I'm saying? But they only got like, I don't, I don't even know if it's one-tenth. I don't know if that was, could we compare that one-tenth of what the lost sheep have gone through and still are going through in this North country and in this ongoing captivity in this spiritual Egypt. But check this out. It says, editors note, this speech was delivered by a white slave owner, Willie, Willie, William Lynch, Billy, Billy, Billy Lynch, Bill Lynch, William Lynch, Will Lynch, if you want, on the banks of the James River, Remember Queen Elizabeth, bitch, witch, whatever, the queen, you understand? She came over here from England. She came over here during the, during the um, uh, baby bush years, and she came to the Virginia colony, you know, and it was to uh, um, commemorate the 400th year. Notice this right here. This speech was delivered by white slave owner William Lynch on the bank of the James River. Guess the year. 1712. What did Willie Lynch say? He said right here, and I quote, I guarantee every one of you that if installed correctly, this slave-making, breaking, man-breaking, black man, black woman breaking, and slave-making, that if installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. Do I have to go here and do the math? I mean, I mean can you do this math in your head? 1712 and 300. Come on, somebody do it. 1712 and, uh, I mean, 1712, yeah, and 300. Together, what does that make? Doesn't that make 2012? Doesn't that make 2012? 2012? Is this a prophecy right here? You know what I'm saying? Some, some unconscious prophecy of white supremacy actually saying how long, you know what I'm saying, this is going to operate for? He's saying that this will control the slaves for at least 300 years, and this is a part of William Lynch, Willie Lynch, affectionately Willie, his part of William Lynch's speech. No wonder they love um, Bill Clinton, William Clinton, William Jefferson Clinton so much. It, it was delivered in 1712, 1712, on the banks of the James River, and that's in the Virginia, Virginia, the Virgin Virgin Babylon, the virgin daughter of Babylon, of Great Britannia. And here it says that this methodology will control the slaves for at least 300 years, and it was delivered in 1712. And that means that when he said this, he must have put it together like 300 years from now will be 2012. He might not have known. I don't think he knew the significance of 2012, but he said it. And now we're in 2011, and we're on the verge, if, if it continues its trajectory, of the old black 
male versus the young black male. And this is said on this page, don't forget you must pitch the old black versus the young black male and the young black male against the old black male. You must use the dark-skinned slaves versus the light-skinned slaves. And you, you know what? Can't niggas read? I mean, can't black people read? I mean, I mean what is... See, this is what we mean by the Bible says it correctly, that it's a curse. You understand? On this people. There's a curse on this people who refuse to hear and refuse to heed. I mean, even if they don't so-called believe things like this, don't, why don't they know their own experience? Why can't they recognize their own experience? My people, my Hebrews, you understand? And, 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 and my nigga Jews, my black Jews, my, my fellow black Hebrews, this is interesting. This is very, very interesting. I, I, I really wonder, I really wonder how many people have put this together. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to take, I'm the first to put this together, but I'm happy somebody put this together. So 2012 is significant because 2012 is the end date, even prophesied by the great slave master instructor himself, Willie Lynch. Something to really make you go, hmm, but something to make you do. Do you know what you got to do now?